At the beginning of human history, God and man were together. Peace and joy reigned. Then man broke God's law. On the same day Adam and Eve sinned, God announced some of the far-reaching consequences of their sin. To the woman, he said, with pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Before sin entered the scene, Eve rejoiced in her husband's selfless love and care, but now their sin-contaminated natures would add strife and pain to the joys of marriage. Next, God told the man, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Because of their sin, Adam and Eve had lost dominion over the earth. Their world would now include thorns, pain, sadness, sickness, and death. Some of us are so accustomed to such misery that we accept it as normal. But was it in God's original design for a fragrant rose bush to have vicious thorns? Or for the wonder of childbirth to include intense pain? Or for those created in God's image to grow old and die? No, God did not design the original creation to fight against itself. It was because of man's sin that the earth came under God's curse. Mankind had sinned and mankind must die. The law of sin and death required it. Death is separation. Sin produces three terrible separations. Number one, spiritual death man's spirit separated from God. Number two, physical death. Man's spirit and soul separated from his body and from his loved ones. Number three, eternal death. Man's spirit, soul, and body forever separated from God in the lake of fire. Man had no way to save himself from the curse of sin. Was there any hope? Satan had stolen the king's special treasure, but the king had a secret plan to buy it back. Because the ransom price the king planned to pay would be so unthinkably high, neither demons nor humans would understand his plan until after it was fulfilled. On the same day Satan captured the human race, God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. When God created serpents, they had legs. Because the serpent was used by Satan to lead humanity into sin, God cursed it to slither on the ground. Did you know that pythons and boa constrictors have tiny nubs under their skin where they once had legs? By making snakes the lowest of beasts, God gave the human family a visual reminder that, in his own time, he will crush that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. Then God said to Satan, who had used the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This was the first of many prophecies in which God would, little by little, make known his secret plan to rescue people from Satan, sin, and death. But to hide that plan from Satan and his followers, the king put the prophecy in code. God promised to send to earth a savior, the offspring of a woman. The savior would have a human mother, but no human father. 
He would be known as the Messiah, meaning the chosen one. Satan would strike the Messiah's heel, but the Messiah would crush Satan's head. What did all this mean? Later the king would make it clear, but for now, God had given Adam and Eve a ray of hope. Thousands of years later, one of the king's prophets would write, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. The king would ransom his special treasure. But how much would it cost? Do you remember what Adam and Eve did after they ate the forbidden fruit? They made coverings of fig leaves. Did their coverings make them feel comfortable in the presence of their creator judge? No, they felt ashamed and guilty. They had no way to make themselves right with God. So God did something for them. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Who made the first animal sacrifice ever? God did. The Lord killed some animals, made coats of skin, and dressed Adam and Eve. By doing this, God was teaching them some basic lessons about His justice, mercy, and grace. Let's think about these three important words. Justice. Look at the dead animals. Why did God sacrifice them? He did it to show Adam and Eve that the law of sin and death must be upheld. Their sin must be punished with death. That is justice. Mercy. Look at Adam and Eve. Did God put them to death? No. God provided animals to die in their place. This was God's way of punishing their sin without punishing them. That is mercy. Grace. Now look at Adam and Eve's beautiful clothing. Did these two lawbreakers deserve this gift? No, but God showed them kindness by dressing them in the skins of the sacrificed animals. That is grace. Because of what the Lord did for them, Adam and Eve were happy to be with God again. The animal blood covered their sin. Adam and Eve deserved to die that day, but innocent animals had died in their place. The animal skin robes covered their shame. Once again, Adam and Eve felt comfortable to be in the presence of God. Thousands of years later, one of God's prophets wrote, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God. For he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. Only God has a way to make sinners right again. When God expelled the rebellious angels from heaven, their doom was sealed. These spirit beings who had lived in the blazing light of heaven had no excuse for their sin. But for sin-contaminated humans, the Lord had a plan to get them back if they would trust Him. Still, sin has consequences. Just as God put Lucifer and his evil angels out of the heavenly paradise, so now God put the man and his wife out of the earthly paradise. After banishing them from the garden, the Lord God stationed mighty angelic beings to the east of Eden, and a flaming sword flashed back and forth, guarding the way to the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life was the other special tree in the middle of the garden. Only perfect people could eat from it. Adam and Eve were no longer perfect. They had sinned and must grow old and die. Our great Creator God is holy. This means He is pure, clean, perfect, and righteous. Because of His holy nature and holy laws, He must punish sin with death, separation from the source of life. 
Some people think that God is so great that he can ignore the laws he himself has decreed. Imagine a courtroom where the judge refuses to enforce the laws of the land. Would you say that such a judge is great? Imagine a football match where the head referee ignores the rules of the game. Would you call him a great referee or a bad referee? Satan wanted Eve to believe that her creator would not enforce his rules, that he would not punish lawbreakers with death. But the righteous king and judge of the universe always keeps his word. God is great. You can trust him. Your throne is founded on two strong pillars, righteousness and justice. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. See if you can answer this riddle. What can Satan and humans do that the Lord God cannot do? Here is God's own answer. I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word. In my holiness, I cannot lie. The king of the universe cannot go back on his word.